Hi, my name is Gina Mitchell and I'm a uh, menopause coach, menopause and midlife coach, and I'm going to be on the Prosperity Online show with Prosper and we're going to be talking about all things menopause. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the CEO of Midlife Coaching for Women, Gina. Gina, how are you doing, my love? I'm very well, thanks, Prosper. Fantastic. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've brought you somebody who is going to be walking us through what going through midlife and menopause is like for women and how it can be avoided or what it is that you can do. So her niche is coaching women over 40 because she has also had challenges of her own with midlife and menopause. And she knows that it's it's not okay, um, you know, that many women suffer and struggle through this stage of life and beyond. So Gina is a certified life coach, certified NLP practitioner. She also does what's called matrix uh, therapy and hy- hypnotherapy. Uh, she, as I mentioned, is the founder and CEO of Midlife Coaching for Women, and she has been supporting her clients to reach their goals since 2021. Now, Gina, I could go on and on, but you're here to let us know a little bit about um, what it is that you do. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you actually got started uh, on your journey as being coach for women. Okay, thank you very much, Prosper, and for this opportunity as well. And you know, one of my one of my passions is to actually get this out there. It's so important that women, especially when they reach midlife, understand this because otherwise it can be quite surprising, and it certainly was for me. So. Um, so anyway, my name is Gina Mitchell. Um, I am now 64 years old. I will be 65 this year, which makes me technically, well, actually legally almost elderly. That's what you sort of, anybody over 65 is classified as elderly. I can't see myself like that. But anyway, uh, I, mean, I still feel like I did when I was 20. In My body doesn't, but my mind does. <laughs> but um Basically, uh, my, my whole background is um, in science and as a teacher, I was actually a teacher, for, a science teacher for 30 years. And um, basically, I, I kind of burned out and it was mainly because of menopause and I didn't really understand it at the time. I always thought that menopause was going to be something like, you know, something simple. You hear about it, oh, yeah, you know, you sort of you from puberty to menopause menopause since you know when you sort of like can have children bloody blah blah when you're over once you actually sort of hit menopause there um you know you, you, your cycle stops you know yeehaw most women will be going yes <laughs> I certainly was and you know and then you have a few hot sweats and you know ne- no problems what was your uncle well it was totally totally different for me and it as it is for about about 20 percent of women that have really a really bad menopause and for me, I mean, as a biology teacher, I really thought I knew what it was going to be about. You know, I just thought, you know, yeah, I can t- I understand the body, I understand how it functions, I understand about hormones, the endocrine system, blah, blah, blah. But I did not understand what the effect was going to be on, on me. And I didn't know that other women went through this as well because the thing is that nobody bloody well talks about it, you know. It, it certainly wasn't. And it's more happening now, thankfully, but nobody really spoke about it. All the women that I actually went through school with, when I was a young teacher and I was teaching with a, a many, many middle-aged women, nobody mentioned it to me. Nobody said, oh, I'm having a hot flush or I'm not really well today or I didn't sleep well last night or I'm actually having depression or I'm anxious, all of those things that can happen. Nobody mentioned it. And so I, I had no clue. So when it finally hit me, I, I just, I was, I was in shock. It was like nobody told me this. And here am I, a biology teacher. So with my science background, et cetera, I thought, you know, I I must be able to do something about this. But first of all, I thought, you know, I'm going to, even before or during when this started, I guess, because menopause is a process. It just doesn't happen in one day. It can take years and years to happen. Um, But basically... I thought to myself when I was not sleeping properly and not realising that it was menopause and I just thought I was stressed very, I was very stressed anyway. And by the way, stress really does feed bad into menopause and makes it even worse because your adrenals get burnt out, doesn't produce the hormones it's supposed to, it 
completely upsets everything. Um, I thought to myself, you know, I want to do something for myself. So I found all these amazing courses in life coaching and therapy and, and all the things that fed my soul, basically. And I did all of those just thinking, you know, just to help myself, basically. And then after I'd gone through menopause, I'd done all of this study, this extra work, all of that kind of thing. And I thought to myself, hang on a moment. If I've helped myself by actually doing all of this, maybe I can help other women as well. You know, it's like, wow, it was a real, a, a, you know, a, a bit of an aha moment for me. I thought maybe I could actually do this to help other women as well because I've actually helped myself. So that's how I started. And even though I've been coaching since 2011, this niche, and I was coaching a lot of different people, anybody that would come my way, but in 2018 was when I had that aha moment. I thought, wow, I've done all of this stuff and I did it for me. But now I can actually help so many other women. So this niche with, with midlife coaching started in 2018. So it's been going now for five years. So um, the way that I help a lot of women, and and I, yes, it's basically women who, who are not feeling good about themselves, basically. So I can actually help them with that. But it's mainly coming from the standpoint of mindset. So it's 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 I can help them with all the symptoms. You know, there's doctors, there's psychotherapists, there's, there's um, you know, nutritionists, there's uh, personal trainers, psychiatrists. There's a whole bunch of people in my network that I can actually refer people to as they need it. However, the way that I do it, um, and then, you know, I, I can actually then consult with all the other people that they need. This before. Uh, by, the, by the way, doctors to produce to um, help with HRT as well. All of that kind of thing I can actually help with by by bringing other people in um but it's mainly i might work mainly work on the mindset because often i mean we, we it's almost like we've been brainwashed into thinking that once you've gone through menopause you're over the hill and you're just tossed out and you're an old hag basically you're an old battle axe well i certainly don't feel like an old battle axe <laughs> that's for sure and i just thought well, no this doesn't feel right it just doesn't feel right but this is like the society's way of looking at women over 40 50 60 whatever that, you know, you sort of put out to pasture and that you're, you're useless. It's like, to me, that that's just a load of crap, really. So I thought, you know, here's menopause and midlife is such an opportune time, you know, when, especially when you're going through, through the menopause thing. It's, it's such an opportune time to really redesign your life for you because often women, they're the ones that, you know, they're the ones that do the majority of the work. They're usually the ones that are stressed, right? And you think about 21st century women. They do, they have full-time jobs. And full-time jobs doesn't doesn't mean 40 hours a week anymore, does it? It means 50. I, as a teacher, I was working at least 50. You know, it's crazy. So they've got full-time jobs. They do the lion's share of, of the house and the family really and the nurturing and the caring and having to think about everything else, you know, all the peripheral stuff, thinking about all of that. So it's no wonder that they're stressed, you know. By that time, though, you know, they say the family, the kids grow up and then there's another added issue, which I've just been through with myself, with ageing parents. It's another, somebody calls them the sandwich generation. The women, they've got children that are still at school, especially with women having children later, still at school or at uni, still living at home, then they've got elderly parents that were lying them. So here they are going through menopause with, Kids on one end, elderly parents on the other, which is doubly, doubly stressful. But having said that, once, you know, kids are off your hands, um, maybe, you know, you've got more free time, maybe you've changed a career, maybe you've retired, whatever, it's an opportune time to redesign your life, to actually do and find the things that you want to do. Absolutely. And the sad, Absolutely. the sad thing is a lot of women don't even know what they want at that stage because they've just been dictated to their whole life by their families, by society, by whatever. So, well, and I ask them, well, what do you want? And they go, I don't know. They've never thought about it. It's like they're so busy looking after everybody else that they put their own needs last and therefore, you know, they don't even know what they want. So it's like, okay, let's just work on best version of you then. What would that look like to you? What would that, you know, what would that feel like to you? So that's where we can start. So that's how I actually help a lot of women. And um, and as I said, it's mainly coming from that mindset. A lot of women get really emotional. Um, another thing, when <laughs> when the hormones wear off, 
basically, this is something else I'll just talk about. Um, from puberty to menopause, we are programmed by our hormones. These hormones are really powerful chemicals. You know, they, they say, you know, have sex, get a boyfriend, get married, have children, um, you know, nurture your family, nurture your community, all of those things. So, you know, you, you're programmed. So any childhood wounds or things that you've had before that, they're not going to get processed during that time because you've got more important things to do, right? So when those hormones wear off, it's almost like all your childhood wounds are laid bare and they're coming up for healing, coming up for healing. Heal me, heal me, you know, all of that stuff. I'm, You know, all that other stuff that you've been doing, that's gone now. Heal me, heal me. So it's such an opportune time to actually get help. And I was going to say, too, with that, a lot of women get really emotional. It's like, I don't know why I'm crying all the time or I'm so upset or I'm just, you know, exhausted or uh, I feel depressed, I'm anxious. It's no wonder all of these childhood wounds there are there ready to be healed now that that hormonal programming has worn off. And as Dr. Christiane Northrup, in, uh, she's a, an acclaimed gynecologist and um, uh, um, um, obstetrician in, in the States, she uses the term the hormonal veil. Once that hormonal veil is lifted, all of these childhood wounds are laid bare for healing. And it's just such an opportune time to actually go there, to really go there and get healed. Heal yourself. Heal yourself emotionally so that then it's almost like cleaning the slate so that you can then design the life that you want for yourself for the next half or third or whatever of your life. So anyway, that's it in a nutshell. I've probably gone on way too long, but anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. I really that appreciate that. I understand what I do. I, I really, really appreciate that. And let me tell you something. You walking through all of that has just given me a new found respect for women because not only do they go through the whole childbearing uh, activity and then that whole, you know, trying to deal with the monthly uh, episodes and then pretty much that then happens. Wow. I heads off to all the women out there and uh, the people that are going through all of this stuff. Now, you did mention that there's not so much help um, around for women um, in, in, in maybe in the time that you were uh, going through this is it is it because is is this uh sort of um occurrence an embarrassing thing that people don't actually stand up and reach out to mention it because um... maybe yeah I, I don't know I just even remember my mum you know when I said to her what was your menopause like she said oh nothing happened I just you know I, my period just stopped one day and then six months later, I realised I hadn't had a period for six months, and that that was the end of that. But I'm looking back, and I can I, I we've, I've spoken about this with my siblings. It's like when she was going through it, she was a bloody bitch, you know. I remember <laughs> she was horrible. So she didn't even know that that behaviour was related to menopause. I'm sure, you know. So there's a lot of people that are going through it that don't even realise that depression, anxiety, irritability, all of that kind of thing is actually directly related to the hormonal, you know, the hormones actually wearing off, those reproductive hormones wearing off. So there's a lot of women that don't even realise that what they're going through is menopause or that those symptoms are due to menopause. So that's number one. Also, you know, it's, it's maybe in the days of, it's getting better, thank God. But in days of old, it was just like not talked about because I don't know whether they, they I don't know why it's, and Maybe the symptoms weren't as bad because women, like in my mum's or my grandmother's generation, they didn't, I mean, it was still hard for them, but they, they didn't have full-time jobs. A lot of them were homemakers. You know, women didn't go to work. A lot of women didn't go to work, the majority, I guess, in Western cultures in, in um, the 50s, the 40s, 50s, and even 60s. Or maybe the 60s is when it started to change when, you know, the... Um, you know, women's live and all that sort of thing happened and um, and women wanted their independence and wanted to be heard. But before that, I guess, number one, women weren't heard, so they, it was just like their job to stay home. But maybe it wasn't so bad because even though we've got all the mod tech appliances and everything, it's, it's, it's not the same as having to work at least 40 hours a week 
plus then come home and have to cook and even though we have convenience meals and all that it's still it's, you still got to do it you know what i mean so i there's probably a whole lot of reasons why it hasn't really been spoken about up until now and there are, are lots of women in this space now thank god for social media um and and uh, being able to communicate all of this and and um yeah and and other women seeing other women communicate it, therefore they're thinking, oh, it's okay to talk about now. We don't have to talk about it in hushed tones with each other, you know, at the barbecue going, is this happening to you? You know, it's like, no, bugger that. It's like, I'm going through menopause, <laughs> you know, like, and this is great because now I can do something about it. I know what it is. I know what the symptoms are. If I'm not feeling well, I know who to go to. And that's just the thing too. When I started going to doctors in my early 50s, in fact, my late 40s, uh, they just put me on these, they, they had no clue, honestly. I had no clue, the doctors that I went to. And bless them, GPs, you know, I take my hand off to them. They have to know a lot about a lot, you know. But one thing is that they just didn't really understand. They just whacked me on some HRT, didn't work. Two lots didn't work for me. Um, yeah, it was pretty horrible. So I had to come off that. Um, and it took me years to actually find, you know, people that could actually help me. Now we have menopause GPs. Um, there's a, a book that's out by um, a woman called Dr. Jenny Mansberg, who, in fact, was <laughs> I used to teach one of her, her children, actually, <laughs> a few years ago now. But she wrote a book called The M Word, and really great book. I really recommend that people go out and read it, um, any woman that's listening to this. Um, and, and Jenny talks about it really scientifically and as a, from a medical point of view it was fantastic really great really good book but one thing that i learned from that is that they actually have gps out there now that are specialized to treat menopause so and you can actually find those on a website somewhere and if you read the book you'll be able to find out you know where it is um where, where to find a doctor um so thankfully this kind of thing is happening now where they're getting specialists you know menopause doctors um, women are talking about it. Uh, there are Facebook groups for menopausal women. So, it, so it's getting out there, thank goodness. So, um, yeah, yeah. All right. I'm just sitting here and I'm thinking, for me, this is all obviously new. And I'm thinking there's yeah. men that might now have a clue that, oh, the reason why Sally was acting like that yesterday is because maybe this is what exactly. was happening now. Just, you know, to, you know, mix it up a little bit. Is, is there something of equivalence to, um, you know, to the opposite side, to 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 the men? Do do people also go, men also go through? Um, this yeah, side? apparently there's this thing called andropause, which is the equivalent. But I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as menopause. And what I would... the symptoms? <laughs> <laughs> And, and you know what, I, you know, a lot of women don't, I should say, around about 20% of women have very, very, very few symptoms. Well, I wish I was one of those women, but it, I wasn't, it wasn't meant to be. And then 20 on the other end of the spectrum, like me, 20% have a hideous menopause. And then, of course, for the, for the next 60%, the middle 60%, they have a varying range kind of thing of, 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 you know, symptoms. So, you know, if you're lucky, your wife won't have a hideous menopause. She might have a nice mild one, which would be lovely, but... You know, <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, it's really important. Yeah, twenty percent of half of seven point whatever billion people on the planet—that's a lot of people to have to suffer. It's a lot of women that do actually suffer, and I and and I've actually been reading that even workplaces now are changing things. I think it's going to be slow, but it's they're changing to actually accommodate for women going through menopause. Um, and it's a thing, so it's happening, and I'm so glad to hear that. Is, is there it's, not going to be any stigmatization because then, you know, there might be a lane where the people going through menopause go through and everybody else goes through another lane, you know, especially I'm just having an idea of, you know, those with menopause, please sit there where the coffee is warmer. Yeah, or sit, yeah well, sit in front of the fan. Yeah. <laughs> it's like put the air con right under the menopausal women. Yeah. <laughs> You know, have um, yeah, yeah, like have days off and things like that where you just can't function properly. You know, and I remember myself being. I used to push myself to go to school, um, because I mean, my twelve, my year twelves, I was, you know, they had their biology agency coming up or whatever it might be, and I felt like I had to be there, so I pushed through, and I wasn't well. 
And my husband pointed it out to me numerous times saying, Gina, you're not well. It's like, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You know, I just have to go to, I have to go to school. I have this work to do. I have this job to do. I've got these people that I'm responsible for. How can I not? So, you know, if, if workplaces had a better idea about what was happening to women during menopause and maybe have some things, some, some strategies in place so that women can take the time off or, or go home early or, you know, as I said, sit in front of the fan or under the air con and having a hot flush um, or whatever, you know, it just it's really important for people to understand that women are not putting this on, you know, that, that this is a real thing and it's it's debilitating. Okay. You know, so- it can be really debilitating. So I, if the more people know this and understand this, the better off it's going to be and better off for the women because they know what's going on and know that they've got some support in place to be able to help them get through it. Absolutely. And I really appreciate that. Now, for those that are going to be around them, what sort of, uh, encouragement do you give because if you know a mom a wife a sister is going through that how can the people around them support them in a way that they're not uh, letting them sit in front of a fan or things of that nature um well just I guess ask you know is everything okay you know you look you, you look tired what is this what's going on can how can I help you just the normal stuff for anybody that's not feeling well. It's like, you know, are you okay? No? Okay. Want to sit down? What, what do you need? You know? Oh, and for me, I mean, my my biggest thing through menopause, and I think a lot of other women can, can understand this, is sleep, insomnia. And it still is for me. I'm much better than I was, but sleep is such, it's, it's, it's so precious that I never got, I couldn't get to sleep. And I was lucky. I, I actually bought one of those Fitbits, you know, the original ones. I've got an Apple Watch to track my sleep now. But, <laughs> but in the old days, I, I bought one specific, not to find out how many steps I did or anything like that. It was to track my sleep. And the thing for me was that I, I was only getting like two hours sleep a night. You cannot find, and I was going on for about 10 years. I'm not joking. And no wonder I was going crazy. You know, I, I, it wasn't just menopause. It was just the insomnia. And everything. I couldn't think straight. I had brain fog. I snapped, I was snapping at people at work I didn't even realise. I didn't even realise, you know, and things like that. And so, yeah, I think that maybe some tolerance as well around women that are going through this. It's like if they snap, it could be just that they just just can't cope. You know, they're not coping well. And so they just need to be, you know, there needs to be some understanding. Absolutely. So, and- yeah. You've also also uh, published a book, Ignite. The- yes, yes. In fact, I've got it. Yeah. This was in in the in the midst of my menopause. I don't even know how I did it when I think about it, really. But it's called it's called Ignite the Spark. It's um, a book about uh, midlife relationships. So, um, so my my main thing again was I was actually looking at um, helping people with their relationships. Because uh, I was a bit of an expert on on dating before I met my husband, I was a bit of an expert. <laughs> I was single for fourteen years, so in between marriages. So, um, um, yeah, I, I have a bit of a, a grounding on dating and, and all sorts of things to do with relationships. And with all the work I did on myself and also the study I did, etc., I actually wrote this book. Um, and you know, talking about the clients I was seeing at that time. About their relationships, etc. So it's uh, seven strategies for reinventing your relationship in your life. So that's it. There it became a number one bestseller on Amazon. Absolutely, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be linking it to uh, in the show notes just so that people can get a an opportunity to, uh, yeah, learn more from from okay. you. Then now, Fantastic. that being the case, you know, you've gone through um all of this now you're teaching people what what are you sort of uh finding that other people are going through is it the same as you or is it totally different and they are uh either way way beyond or they're way advanced um in in their journey with with the menopause there uh, most of the women that come to me are usually exhausted and and just and, and emotional really emotional um, and they want, they know that they're not 
things aren't right. They know that things aren't right. So they that's they come to me um for help for that basically. Yeah. Absolutely. Like I keep repeating, I've really got a newfound uh, respect for uh, <laughs> women because they are everybody's cook, they're everybody's maid, they're everybody's taxi driver. And I don't think we are taking the time to actually ask our loved ones and, um, you know, just find out if everything is a okay with them and things of that nature. Now, Obviously, this is a period that somebody has to sort of go through or experience. Is there a light at the end of the tunnel or is this it? <laughs> uh, well, I look, for most women, it probably will subside after a few years. Right. But for some women, it will go on until they die, into their 90s. It's just, and, and how do you know? Who knows? It's the luck of the draw. You know, some women will get through it really quickly. Others will take a few years. Others, the symptoms will subside but sort of stay there and some other poor women will have them forever, basically. So my advice is stay on HRT <laughs> until, <laughs> until you really, you know, until you really want to come off it, you know. So, yes, that, that's that's my advice. Stay that's on it as long as you can. <laughs> cool. And what is it that people can do? I mean, obviously, if, if you know this is something that's going to be long term, you're not going to make it paralyze you. You might as well leave with it and deal with it. What would you sort of advise uh, people? Well, that I'd, I'd say I'd say to women to get on HRT, basically, go and see your doctor, go and make sure that it's right for you um, and, and, and do that. And then, you know, and then come and see me so that you can reinvent your life as well. So, so you get your physical sorted out, your emotional sorted out, your mindset sorted out all together because, you know, I, that's why I have other people in my network. I can't do everything. And the thing is, though, when women come to me, they don't even know what they need or want. They don't know, you know, that they might need a personal trainer or a nutritionist or whatever. They don't know. So as I work with them, then we point out, it's like, have you thought about working with, you know, you say that you think you're overweight or you put on a lot of weight or and you don't know what's happening. Your diet hasn't really changed. And have you thought about seeing a nutritionist and then I can actually help them with that? Or it could be, you know, um, um, you're not moving very much. Oh, I've got no motivation to exercise. Okay. Have you thought about getting um, a personal trainer, um, somebody that works with midlife women? Um that kind of thing. So, or, or I don't know what to do because you know, having all these hot flashes and blah 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 blah. It's like, well, have you seen your doctor? Have you spoken about HRT? If you don't know a doctor, I can help you find one. Um, yes, but all in the meantime, we're dealing with the. Well, I'm helping them deal with their emotions, cleaning up the wounds from their past. You know, cleaning up old, old emotions. The, the you know, the big emotions that like anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt, all of the old stuff that we drag through life with us, you know, and every time you get angry, you do it as a pattern the same way you did it the first time. If you can clean up that first time you did it, then when you get angry, because, I mean, anger is just a normal emotion, by the way. We, we all get angry. But you only want to get angry at the thing that you're getting angry about. You don't want to get angry at every last little thing that happens, you know, in all your life. And, and I, I often use this this metaphor as well, is that, you know, you're driving along and, um, and, you know, you might be, somebody cuts you off in traffic. Like if you've got all this old anger happening, you'll be screaming at them, oh, you idiot, 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 hoot, 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 hoot. you know, with your, with your horn, blah, 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 screaming at them. And it's got nothing to do with the guy that cut you off in traffic, you know. It's, it's all to do with the old anger that's just been triggered from, you know, your whole life basically. But, you know, if you cleaned up all that old anger, for example, and somebody cuts you off in traffic, it's like, oh, look, you know, oh, you might get annoyed. You might get a little bit angry, but it only lasts for a short amount of time. It's like, oh, he's an idiot. Oh, he must be in a hurry. And it's gone. You know, and I think about, you know, <laughs> this same thing where it, it, this road rage, right? And it's usually men, I must say, because men just don't. And I, this is a generalisation here. I admit that. But generally, men don't deal with their emotions. They don't cry as much as women. It's getting better, by the way. I think it is getting better. But, you know, generally speaking, men usually keep all their emotions inside, right? And so they've got all this anger and they don't want to express it. They don't want to sort of come out and, you know, appropriately get rid of it. So, you know, like somebody cuts them off in traffic, they go up and they get out and they start punching on with everybody and it's like, oh, my God, this has got nothing to do with the guy they're punching on with. This is to do with this old anger from your parents, from your teachers, from your 
ex-wife and old girlfriends and your siblings and all this crap has now just come into this one moment. <laughs> Whereas if they cleaned all that up, right, it wouldn't be happening. They'd feel so much more at peace. And yeah, so anyway, that's how I help people clear up those old emotions and then cleaning the slate to design a life for them. You know, what is it that you really, really want to do now for the rest of your life? Okay, let's make a list. Let's get it done. Let's do it. I'll keep you accountable. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, obviously, if you're watching along and actually getting tips from you, they're now probably sitting at the edge of their seat wondering what would be the first thing that they need to do in order for them to uh, connect with you so that they can actually, um, you know, get past this or deal with what um, has just been bestowed on them. Beautiful. Okay. So I offer a totally complimentary, no obligation. Uh, I call it a, a beautiful soulful connection session and they can just book in via calendar and just book in for a session and we can just um, have a chat and see if uh, what I offer is right for them or not, whatever, and we can go from there. Fantastic. You see, ladies and gentlemen, if you have been paying attention, obviously this is uh, a lot of valuable information being the fact that a lot of women are suffering and uh, nobody's out there giving them advice. So I really strongly uh, uh, encourage you to jump on the links in the bottom so you can get the information from Gina and get started. Or if you just want to uh, ignite the spark in your relationship, that would also be uh, advisable to pick the book that uh, we also have in the links in the bottom. As you have noticed, um, you know, if you're watching this right now, it's actually a big frustration that a lot of women don't quite know that it's actually normal what it is that they're going through and there's help out there. And there's people like Gina and uh, also some medical practitioners that would be uh, available to help you out. And for those that are leaving and dealing with people that are going through, um, you know, these uh, episodes, it is advisable to just take a step back, ask your loved ones uh, what is actually going on and uh, be there for them, not go and invest in an industrial uh, size fan just and ask them to sit in the <laughs> garage. Um, that way they can deal with that. Now, Gina, you know, for when we were talking, you were explaining to me that you were a 10 pound homie uh, that came by way of the UK. And now you've established yourself in Australia and done quite a lot of things. What can people expect um, first of all, when they come through and work with you and just expect what's going to happen in the life of Gina uh, in this post-menopause uh, time. Yay, post-menopause. Yes, thank God. <laughs> what did they expect, I guess? Um, yeah, being a pet, I, I came from the UK. Um, my parents immigrated out here in 1968 uh, and I, I came up again. They were only like they were really young at the time and, and my siblings and I were very young. I was only nine years old at the time and, um, yeah, lived on the Sunshine Coast and then when I went to university and, and met my first husband, we moved to Sydney. And I love Sydney so much, of course, that I've stayed and it's my home now. Um, most recently, though, I was up on the Sunshine Coast with my mum, who's elderly, talking about that sandwich generation. I don't, I never had kids, but <laughs> but my mum needed me. My, my dad passed away a few years ago now, but they were long time divorced you know they were when we were kids they got divorced basically when we first came out to australia within two years they were divorced um but um mum uh, she yeah she really needed my help up in queensland so i went up there for 18 months and we got her into care and um i stayed up there looking after her house getting her house in order etc um and my, my sister came over from perth which was lovely um so it was only about six months ago that we actually moved back to sydney but having said that we're driving up to Queensland tomorrow, actually, for a month to spend some time up there with my brothers, my mum, and blah, 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 and, and then we're back in Sydney. But I, I, Sydney's my home. I love Sydney. I love the city. I love the vibe. Of, you know, I love the restaurants. I love the theatre. I love everything that the city life has to offer. So I'm a bit of a, a city girl. And um, But when people come to me, I guess another thing is I'm a, I'm a bit of an extrovert. I love people. Hence, me being a teacher, 
you know, I didn't want to sit in a lab when I got my science degrees, et cetera. I, I didn't want to be in a lab. I wanted to be around people. And so coaching for me is a really great natural extension of my teaching career as well. So I'm an extrovert. I love people. I love to help people. I, I love being with people. Um, and so, yes, I'm pretty high energy. Uh, probably explains why I do have issues with sleep. I've got too much adrenaline running around me. <laughs> um, and also I'm, I'm a bit of an animal lover as well. I'm even a vegetarian because I love animals and I don't want to eat them. So, um, yeah, so that's a little bit more about me. Um, if people can resonate with that and, and, and like that high energy, they, um, yeah, absolutely. I'd love, for, I'd love for them to contact me. I'd love to be able to work with them. So, yes. So, does that answer your question, Prosper? It does. <laughs> and absolutely appreciate your time. And I'm really happy we caught you before you went on your um, trip, uh, you know, and um, yeah, we wouldn't have been able to schedule this time. So, I really, really appreciate that. And I also want to say, on behalf of all the women out there that are probably going through uh this you know people like yourself are actually going to be making a difference and on a personal note i do have a really big soft spot for people that are teachers because you touch people's lives in ways that you would never think um you know possible i do have a story of my own when you've got time we can sit down and i can tell you how a teacher literally changed my life so i'm thinking with what you're doing with what you have done you're really making a difference so thank you so much for the work you're putting out there yeah thanks prosper and i did see that on this time next year with carl stepanovic i saw you and i saw the outcome that you found that teacher that made all the difference to you so that was that's the beautiful story beautiful story Absolutely. Well, you've got an opportunity to actually have that happening for you, but we could go on and on. I want to leave you time to pack your bags for tomorrow. And I <laughs> really, really appreciate the time that we've spent on here. And as you have heard, there's really um, very little out there and nobody's really talking about menopause, yet it is something that happens to almost every woman that you come across. And as you have heard, it actually took her years to find all the help that she needed. And she doesn't want to, um, you know, let any woman go through any of the stress that she went through. And as you have heard, uh, if she's not uh, driving across uh, Australia, um, you know, enjoying her life, she now helps women to live their best lives using menopause and midlife uh, as a springboard um, to actually getting what it is that they want at any stage in their life. Now, Gina, I can't thank you enough for the time and the expertise and just the value that you brought to the uh, show today. Thank you so much, Prosper. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. You really got to get this message out there. Fantastic. Bye for now. Thank you.